Have a wonderful day everyone, this is Dr. Lorna and welcome back to the segment of my channel, Knowledge is Power. It's summertime and the heat index is higher than usual. So it's very important for us to know what are the most common health conditions that this can bring to us. With that, let's talk about heat rash, heat exhaustion, heat cramps, and heat stroke. Let's start with heat rash, also known as the prickly heat or miliaria rubra. Symptoms of itchiness, signs of red cluster of pimple or small blisters usually appear at the neck, upper chest, groin, under the breast, and in elbow creases. Now, what about the first aid? So less exposure to the heat or less humid environment. Keep the rash area dry, apply powder to increase comfort, and don't use ointment or cream. And now, let's proceed to heat exhaustion. It is the body's response to an excessive loss of water and salt, usually through excessive sweating. Heat exhaustion is most likely to affect the elderly people with high blood pressure and those working in a hot environment. Now let's proceed to heat cramps. Heat cramps actually is the first stage of heat illnesses, seconded by heat exhaustion before heat stroke. This is actually painful involuntary muscle spasm that usually occur during heavy exercise in hot environments. That is the reason why when you do Samba or any exercise, it is very important to first do a warm-up or stretching. For the first aid, rest in a cool place. Then apply firm pressure on cramping muscles or gently massage to relieve the spasm. Replace lost water and electrolytes. If not relieved, then bring the patient to the nearest emergency room. Finally, we must have to know the differences between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. When we say heat exhaustion, there is a feeling of dizziness. In heat stroke, confusion. In heat exhaustion, there is an excessive sweating. While in heat stroke, no sweating. In heat exhaustion, clammy skin in the other side for the skin is so dry and the temperature is over 40 degrees Celsius. Both of them have nausea and vomiting. In heat exhaustion, there is heat cramps, while in heat stroke, there may be loss of consciousness or experience convulsion or seizure. Now, how can you help someone experiencing like this? First, get out to the heat quickly and go to a place that is cool or at least a shaded area. Lie down and elevate the legs to get blood flowing to the heart. Take off any tight or extra clothing. Apply cool towel to the skin or take a cool bath. Then replace the lost fluid and electrolytes. Again, if signs and symptoms persist, proceed to the nearest emergency room. I hope that you learned something because knowledge is power.